and welcome back. This is episode 26 of TFC ModCraft. And as I said in the last episode, I did do some rearranging of chests, as you can see. And I went ahead and used mostly alchemical chests, although I did go with the iron chests for a few of them. And basically what we have here is some miscellaneous building materials, build craft, industrial craft, red power, and there's the size of the iron chest. Yes, that is about the same size as a default uh, vanilla double chest. And here is the gold chest, which is a little bigger. And the alchemical chest. Now, I've noticed, uh, I did some comparisons in a test world. The alchemical chest has 104 slots. And the gold chest can be upgraded to a diamond chest. The diamond chest has 108 slots. Not a big huge difference I'll admit, but there you go. Anyway, my chests here I've got everything along the side up there is still default vanilla items. And all along here up to and including a default route chest for things the system doesn't know how to handle and the system is working very nicely and here we've got stuff coming from the tree farm which by the way is doing very well and things are going alright also I found that I could put the uh, overclocker upgrades five of them in one macerator none in that one and I've got five in this furnace and five in that furnace it's doing all right, but I'm thinking very soon I want to upgrade to induction furnaces, rotary macerators, and so on, complete with uh, everything I need to go ahead and run them off of uh, the medium voltage and not need not need the uh, low voltage transformer in front of them. Uh, let's see, that has generated up to 11 diamonds. It's not bad considering the amount of mining I've done recently. And you can get a good idea of that by looking in here. That sucker is just about full. In fact, I'm going to have to start making some of these iron ingots and whatnot, some of these things into blocks just to uh, have a little space for them and then set, a crafting set up auto crafting tables to de-block them as needed. Anyway, that's pretty much what's going on here. There is some more. There is some more. Pardon me. Going on over here. First, I cleaned the area up a little bit, and then I did a little bit of reworking of the plumbing here. And I have noticed something. You see right here, this wooden pipe. It has none of its three connections are set as the source and I've found that every time I start the game I have to come over here and whack that with the wrench to get it working right and the same thing over here with this one whack that with the wrench to get it working right after I do that as long as I keep the game loaded it stays right but every time I restart I have to come back over here and do that again not sure what is with that got a good amount of fuel going and plenty of fuel there and I'm pretty sure there's more oil in the well but I'd have to go out there so that it will load before doing anything and I have found that despite having a portal out to there the portal does not work unless I actually walk out there at least once to get close enough to it for it to load which frankly is a royal pain and that's with two chunk loaders out there one next to the well and one right next to the portal spawner so the chunk loader blocks are not exactly very helpful and okay there was something I wanted to get to in this episode now I am going to work on doing something about increasing power generation either we're going uh, geothermal 
or as some have suggested that I would go nuclear. That's a possibility. But right at the moment what I want to deal with is the reason that I have this quarry turned off. And that involves a little something down in the mine. And first I'm going to jump through that portal back to the base and I'm going to drop an orange portal and I think I'll drop it outside. Okay. Alright. Now let's take a trip down into the mine. You can see here I've been working with the destruction catalyst there a little bit. But mostly I've been doing that down on the very bottom of the mine. But before I had the destruction catalyst I was doing my standard branch mining routine and if you'll recall from back on one of the very early episodes I found a little something over here and I would like to do something with it because right now where we're at right now is below the quarry and I want to do something with this before the quarry eats it and it will. So what I'm thinking is that it's time to put together a mob trap. A most unique one I think because the trap can be built before this thing is moved into it because I have found in a test world that the portal guns gravity gun feature can move mob spawners. So get out of here and figure out what to do here with this mob trap thing. Now I'm thinking this doesn't have to be a majorly complicated thing just basically a 9x9 nine nine room with the mob spawner at the top in the center of it and if Let's see, it's like 23 blocks, 24 blocks or more above the surface, then the mobs will spawn, they will die on impact, and then we can work out some kind of uh, red power s system or other, perhaps, to handle item collection. Or maybe just let them drop and take care of them with a lava stream and then still use uh, like a red power retriever to pick up items. And those items can be fed to a chest and the overflow going into the antimatter relay of course. So let's see where do we put this thing? Uh, probably out back here. Alright. Here we are. No, I want the destruction catalyst on the hot bar. There we go. All right. I want to be careful going this way because I don't want to hit the tree farm by accident. Ooh, a little cave down here. How about that? Okay. Not much of one, but it's lit up. Alright. Quick distraction there. I do believe my client star is empty. All right. 
Okay. Well. We'll go ahead and dig this out just a little bit and uh, gather up some materials and we'll get started with a quick 9x9. Nine nine. Well, 9x9 nine by, nine by about 25 or so. Alright, I've got the area cleared up out there and I was just thinking that it might be handy to have something kind of cool to help out with the building and that would be the Mercurial Eye. Okay, and let's see. Obsidian and bricks I have. Red matter. Okay, to get red matter, you get dark matter with eternalist fuel around it. To get dark matter, a diamond block with eternalist fuel around it. Well, let's see. I know I've got a bunch of eternalist fuel because I, throw, I drop several stacks of redstone in here and just let it go. So, there's some eternalist fuel. And... There's a diamond block. Okay, so... Let's get a diamond block. And surround it with a turtleist fuel. There's red matter, uh, or dark matter. Surround that with fuel. Get the red matter. The trans table already knows about dark matter. Let's make sure it knows about the red matter. All right. Uh, let's see. And there's some bricks, the red matter, and a diamond, and some obsidian. All right. Go ahead and put that back. And I believe I have some bricks. And there's obsidian in there too. So, obsidian. Grab some daylight here. And try this thing out. Okay. You put a block in here that you want to target. And in here for fuel. Let's see. There's a Klein's target with 6,000 units of uh, EMC in it use for fuel and for blocks uh, let's actually that's right I only need to put one in there don't I let's let's build this out of marble all right let's see it's G to change mode all right, transmutation mode. Charge it up one notch. Oh, well, it would help if I put the target block in there so that it knows what to make. Okay, let's see, let's get to do it right mode here. Pillar extension mode. Extension mode. There we go. Oops, I didn't want it there. And 
actually I need to kind of work out my dimensions a little bit better now that I'm beginning to think about almost knowing what this thing is doing all right let's figure out let's see here that's one two three four five six seven eight nine and this is one two three four five six seven, all right there's my nine by nine all right let's take the marble that I've got here and outline this shape all right now I'm gonna have to take this wall down and then I can put the walls where they need to be transmutation mode would have fixed that. Okay, just for grins, let's try it. Extension mode, there we go. Okay. Let's see, I'm going to want this thing about, say, Let's go 26 blocks off the ground. Oops, that is not what I wanted. here and redo my tower because I lost count I'm picking up all these extra blocks I'm going to get down there and get all four walls of this thing built, clean up this little mess, all right, Okay. 
not okay. Good night. What the heck did I do? Certainly not what I was aiming at. I'm going to clean this mess up and get this built into a 9 by 9 by 25 and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, it's taken me a while and a lot of false starts and a lot of messes I had to clean up to get this thing figured out, but I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. It's allowing me to build this wall a lot faster than I could have otherwise. Definitely. That's the height that we want. And yes, I used a portal to get back down after the first time I came up, pillaring up with uh, just the old-fashioned way, because I didn't have a whole lot of a clue, and I was making a mess with this thing. Alright, uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and take that portal block down. And, well, no, actually, I think I need to leave a portal up here. Come to think of it. For one thing, I'm not going to put a roof on this just yet. Because to do so would be to invite spawns that I don't want. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and. Oh, wait a minute. I need to fix that area. And the way it is, it targets a 3x3 three three square. So if you aim like here it'll fill in the wall there. And so I target here, there. Now the wall is complete. And all I need is a doorway. Okay, it's not 100% complete on the outside, but right now, the inside is what matters. And let's see. One of the things I'm going to want is a way to turn this thing on and off. I really need to fix that door. Okay, let's see. Good power. Alright, red alloy. That should be more than enough, especially when I combine it with that. And let's see. This guy. White lumar, redstone, and glass. Okay, white lumar, you get that with bone meal, redstone, and glowstone. Alright. Got some glowstone, got some redstone, and I think I picked up a bone when I was outside too, yeah? No, 
Well, hopefully that's enough. Uh, actually, it ought to be. I just need about probably six or eight lights. So let's see. Redstone, glowstone, bone meal. That's probably more white lumar than I'll need in a long time. And let's grab some glass. And what else was that? Redstone. All right. So we've got lumar. glass, redstone, and there's eight white lamps that ought to be enough. Okay. Oops, wait a minute. I'm going to need that one yet. All right. be enough of that. Put away the glass. Drop off the redstone and glowstone. And pick up a lever to turn it on and off. top of this thing. Okay, now where are we going to put these lamps? Uh, let's see, it's a 9 by 9, right? Well, to have enough light in there to shut down spawns. Oh, that was brilliant. Oh, that was even more brilliant. portal and go get them. days I'm going to develop something called AIM. Okay. Uh... 
you know there's no sense in running vertical wiring all the way up here the thing to do wireless receiver and just get a wireless transmitter to go with that I don't need that right now alright uh, wireless transmitter Transmitter is the one with the redstone torch, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So grab some daylight. And now we get this thing done. Okay, so we've got our lamps with the red outlet wire. We'll take a wireless receiver. Drop it down there. Set that to frequency, oh, I don't know, 20. Just because I know that's one I haven't used. Not that I've used very many, mind you. All right, now. Let's see, not there, because I want to do something else there, but, uh, hmm. No. Uh, all right. No, no, no. It can't be there because the plumbing down there will interfere with it. I guess it's going to be here for right now. All right. There it is. Wireless transmitter on the bottom of that block. Go ahead and turn it on. Frequency 20. Patch the hole. And go have a look upstairs. Alright, that's all lit there. Let's have a look in from below. looks to be fairly brightly lit and of course the mob spawner is going to go right up topside there two blocks below the surface to be exact in fact let's get a place to set the thing that's going to be enough light to shut it down or not but then again I don't suppose I need to worry about it too much I can always add some more lights all right all right that's one two three four five six seven eight uh -huh. okay mob spawner will be put to rest on that block right there 
and then the block directly above it that I shouldn't have taken down. The block directly above it will prevent mobs from spawning above it. Alright, now let's see, one more step here. I need a temporary platform here. so that I can bring the spawner in. And let's just drop our blue portal here. Do something about food before that becomes an issue. go get that spawner. Remembering the blue portal is up in the trap. That's right. I portaled my way out of there and left my pillar in the way. Well, I guess I'm going to do it again. Alright, orange portal. And gravity gun. We have a portal spawner. You can't push it in there ahead of you, but if you back into the portal, it comes with you. Now just take it here, set that thing in position. We'll hit G again to let go of it. Drop a couple of torches on it just in case for the moment. And yeah, let's leave that one there. Now, head back through here. And get back down to the other end of that thing. And we can get that uh, orange portal down where we can use it. And then we go back in. And take that temporary flooring and pillar out of there and we're set and ready to go. And I'll catch you back at the trap. Alright. Drop our orange portal back here. Go ahead and duck through there. Looks like that's going to be okay. Let's try it without the torches and see what happens. Sword at the ready, just in case. And I don't see anything happening here, so... And yes, I do see one fatal flaw in my design, because you'd have to be within 16 blocks of this guy in order for him to spawn. And that means that I'm going to have to have a platform somewhere on the outside within 16 blocks of the surface of the top. Alright, take my pillar down here and I'll meet you at the bottom. Okay, now, assuming that uh, I take care of the problem of being close enough to activate the spawner. Apparently an on-off switch is not really necessary given that you have to be close enough for it to start up. Alright, uh, let's see. I think the thing to do is 
set water up on top of those blocks. It'll flow this way and well, let me get some water. Ah. Okay, let's not walk into that. Or that one. <laughs> How about let's just close those suckers. Alright, uh, water. And yes, I know it's dark and I'm going to keep going anyway. Alright. Okay, then uh, a line of water along there. We'll go right to here. And what I'm going to do is put the water there like that run out here and get some more I think I know how this is gonna go alright let me get another bit of water and actually take a minute to sleep till day and I'll be right back. All right. Now. Here we go. Water there. Now all I have to do is break this line of brick and it'll flow. It's a lot easier than trying to place water against a current. Okay. And you can see the flow of items coming down that water stream. Very nice. All right. So now we drop another water current there. And right here is where we put a retriever to pick up the items. And we'll get to that in the next episode because I know I've run long with this. But that's alright. Alright, catch you in the next episode and we'll pick up with item retrieval for this thing and then crank it up and see how it goes. Take it easy, I'm out of here.